What's up, everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this episode, we're going to talk about code splitting in React. More specifically, we're going to talk about just how easy it actually is to get that extra performance that code splitting offers using React's suspense and lazy API. If that sounds interesting to you, keep watching. Okay, so on screen right now, we have the code to an application that I built for a previous video where I was demonstrating how to send files using WebRTC, so those really large files from one peer to another peer using WebRTC. But what's really most important for the sake of this video is not so much about the WebRTC part, though if you do wanna watch that video, you can find a link to it down in the description box below. But what's actually relevant to us here is the fact that we actually have an application that is broken down to two pages. In other words, the root URL, and then you're met with the uh, create room page and I'll show you the code for create room in just a second or alternatively you can go to slash room slash colon room ID and then you're met with the actual room page so if we look at the code for create room you can see that there's really very very little code on the other hand if you go to the room file you can see that there's a significant amount of more code that's actually going on over here a lot of this is involved with the actual communicating with the server via WebSockets. there's the whole WebRTC connection the signaling between the two different peers the logic for sending one file to another file but the point is there's definitely a significant amount of code that's basically happening here in the room.js file. And so now given the fact that this is a single page application, what ends up happening is no matter which one of these two pages the user is going to, they're gonna be downloading the code for the other page as well because effectively they're only downloading one bundle that contains all of the application code in one bundle, right? So all the code that's necessary for create room and all the code that's necessary for the actual room file is all going into that bundle and the user basically has to download all of that. And this is of course very inefficient because if the user is only trying to visit the create room page and they may not even decide to create a room to then go and start sharing files with another person, why should that initial download have to be so big and therefore make it rather slow for the user? Now, of course, in this example, it's not going to actually be slow. There isn't enough code for that. But the concept basically still stands. If I'm trying to visit a page on a specific website, why should I have to be downloading all the other code that comes along with this website for all the other pages that I may or may not actually have a chance to visit? And so that's where code splitting actually comes into play. So one of the things that I actually think will actually help us see code splitting in action is to actually head on over to the terminal and run the uh, command yarn build. So this is an application that was created using a create react app, which gives us the build uh, script out of the box. And basically this creates an optimized production build and it will output all the files that were generated running this particular script. And what's really neat about this, as you can see right here, it actually shows us for the main chunk. So we're actually not gonna ignore the other files. They're not actually relevant to what we're talking about right now. The one that actually contains our actual application code, the one that's relevant to the actual project that we've worked on resides in this file over here main that some hash that chunk that js this one right over here and it actually shows us just how big this file actually is and you can see right now that it's giving us an output of 1.49 kb which is of course not actually big but the point will still stand very soon once we actually start implementing the code splitting code but the goal for this video right now is to kind of drastically bring down the size of that file so that therefore when the user is visiting our page, the initial download that they actually have to go through with their browser is going to be significantly faster because it's just going to be that much less code to download. So let's actually make that happen. Okay, so here's what we've done. We've imported suspense and lazy from React, and then we're actually using lazy to dynamically import. So this here is the import function syntax, which allows us to dynamically import, right? So typically when you're importing a any kind of file within JavaScript using the import syntax, you're basically doing that statically, which means the first time that the actual fact the application is actually running on the sort of first initial uh, compilation, if you will, we're already sort of importing that file. And it's, it doesn't happen dynamically at a later point in time, it happens right then and there. So using the function import syntax, we're basically able to import files dynamically. And what import function syntax does is it returns a promise that resolved with the component that we're actually trying to import. And that's exactly what the lazy function that we've imported from React is looking for. It basically wants us to pass in a function that will uh, dynamically import a component and return a promise that resolves to that imported component. Now, the problem that we now have, given the fact that this sort of component 
is going to be lazy loaded. In other words, it's not going to be loading right now. It's going to sort of be loaded at a later point in time when it gets needed. The problem that we now have with that is the fact that the route component that we're importing from React Router only allows us to really give it components that are actually going to be rendered right now. In other words, it, it can't render some sort of, you know, unresolved or unfulfilled promise. It needs to have an actual React component right now ready to render. And so what Suspense allows us to basically do now is to say, okay, given the fact that the component that you're trying to sort of visit right now is still in the middle of being loaded lazily, um, instead of me actually rendering the main UI where you're trying to sort of see this component that doesn't actually exist yet because it's being loaded, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of fall back to something else that, that I want to show you. So in this case, just for the sake of keeping this example very simple, I'm just sort of going to render a simple div that's just going to say loading dot dot dot. But the point now stands, the thing that's actually most important about this particular syntax using the import, the dynamic import syntax, in other words, the import function syntax, is that when Webpack comes across this type of syntax, Webpack is actually now going to go ahead and create a separate file or a separate bundle, or actually it's most accurately called a separate chunk, each one of these uh, dynamic import syntaxes, or for each one of these dynamic import calls. And now what that basically means is that all the code that's relevant for creating the room and all the code that's relevant for the actual room file is now going to get put into its own separate bundle and not going to be in the main uh, bundle that we previously saw, which was um, 1.49 KB, right? And so to kind of actually prove that, what I'm now going to do, given the code that we have on screen right now, once again, run the build script that we're going to see just how drastically the actual size of that main file has actually come down to. So let's do that. Okay, so as you can see, if we once again find the uh, main that some hash that chunk that JS, this is the again the file that actually contains all of our main application code. We now can see that instead of it being 1.49 KB, it is now only 605 bytes, which is of course a pretty drastic reduction in size, therefore making the initial download for our user that much smaller and that much faster. Well, that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.